Hi, and thanks so much for joining me. Today we are talking about this monochromatic look, so if you'd like to see that, please keep watching. So today I wanted to feature a few products that I've been using, um, testing out for you. The first is this Armani Prima. It's the color control glow moisturizer. I was interested in this because I had read an article about it and all the great things that it does. So I wanted to give it a try. I do have it in the shade four. There are only five shades available in this, which is a little bit limited, but I still wanted to give this a try. So we're going to start off with that. Then we're going to go into this Lancome Le Monochromatique. I always think I'm saying that wrong. This product that I received from Influencer, but I've been using it quite a bit as you can see. So I use it on my eyes, cheeks, and lips. So I wanted to show you that one because it is so easy to use in terms of getting a look pulled together with just limited products. So let's go ahead and just jump in. So I've prepped my skin. I put a little bit of the magic cream on because I think I need a little bit more heavy moisturizer because this does catch on dry patches. I also used a little bit of the Clay de Peau, let me just see what it's called, Radiant Multi Repair Oil on, and I let that sink into my skin for, um, again, about 45 minutes to an hour, just to get that all settled in there. This is how much I'll put on. I'm just gonna use my hand because this is a low moisturizer, so I think if you have more oily skin to begin with, you might not need to prep like I did, but I've used this a few times and I noticed that it does really emphasize dry patches. So if you have dry skin, just be aware. You're either gonna have to prep your skin or maybe just pass on this. I actually did try this as my moisturizer and it still um, brought out those dry patches. And I'm being pretty liberal with this because it's SPF as well. I think you can see how it does blur some of those darker areas, acts as a bit of a filter. So those of you who tuned into the Laura Mercier video, this has doesn't have the same kind of shimmery element, although it's not completely matte either. Yeah, this applies much better on well moisturized skin. I am seeing some streaks here, though, so you might want to go over it with a beauty blender. It does take a bit of work for it as a moisturizer, I would say, compared to other tinted moisturizers. Yeah, I can see though, I do have still some dry patches even with all that moisturizing and I can I can see that it does bring those about. So if you have any sort of dryness, um, definitely get a tester and see if you like this or not first, if possible. But if I were to get a tester of this, I probably wouldn't buy a full size. Just because I think there are products out there that do the same kind of job without emphasizing that. So that is that. I'm gonna go ahead and conceal, put eyebrows on, and then we'll go ahead with eyes, cheeks, and lips with this product right here. So I went ahead with my concealers, the Clay de Peau, then I went over that with my Charlotte Tilbury. Number two, Airbrush Flawless Finish Powder. And I also have the Ambient Lighting Powder by Hourglass in Radiant Light to finish that off. I put my eyebrows on Wonder Brow plus uh, the Dior Pump and Brow. Pump and brow? Yeah, pump and brow. Yeah, <laughs> pump and brow. I also put a little bit of bronzer on, Guerlain. So we're gonna go in with this. It's the Le Monochromatique by Lancome. It's the one I received from Influencer to try out, and I really like it. So this one is in the shade Haute Couture, and I'm just gonna take a brush like this, a fluffy brush. So I'm just gonna brush it on so you can see. So you can see. It's very intense, even with a brush. Because sometimes I'll just take my finger and pat it on, but the brush will allow me to kind of fade that in. I can see already though, see it sticks a little bit though. So if you have any um, moisture or it's kind of like it's got some moisturizer on there, it will kind of cling. So this is a little bit tricky to work with, so it's not something that you can just easily apply. You kind of have to be careful with this one. But it's really, really pretty. It has a cranberry color with a very warm kind of shift on top, almost like an, I wonder if you can see it here, but you can see it's got a kind of a, an orangey, warmth to it 
on the shimmery part of it. It has many different shades in it, which you can't tell really from the pan, I don't think. Beautiful. Then we're gonna take this and I'm gonna show you what it looks like patted on. So I'm gonna just pat some on with my finger, just to intensify. I think that's the easiest way to do this if you just want to concentrate in a certain area because it's a little hard to control. It's not the easiest, but you can see how it just punches that up a little bit. It behaves like a pigment in that it really sticks to the skin. So that's why I say it's not the easiest. Um, I'm just gonna dampen a brush. It doesn't make as much of a paste as say the Chantecaille, but you can add water to this as well. I'm actually gonna go get some water and I'll be right back. So I got some water and I'm just going to add it I like to just add water to the corner whenever I add anything because I don't want to ruin the entire thing. But the water kind of sits on top, so it doesn't make a paste very well. It kind of gets either absorbed or just sits on the top. It doesn't really make the best paste, but I wanted to show you, you can use it wet as well. And it just intensifies it even more. I think this is a great color for fall. I wanted to let that sit for a little bit. So I wanna try it as a blush for you. So one of the reasons I also just um, contain that water in the corners because when I go in for the blush, I don't want it to be damp because then it will really catch. But you saw the intensity of it, so just be very, very careful on the cheeks or else you're gonna end up with too much. So I'm just kind of wiping this on a paper towel as well. And I'm gonna dab it on first because I don't know how much is gonna end up here on my cheeks. Make sure you have a blush brush, you know how it deposits blush. This one's a really nice one. This is the uh, Marc Jacobs, the blush brush. It does look a bit more like an orange shade on the cheeks than cranberry, which I think is interesting. So again, my little trick if you put too much blush on, which um, this is really easy to put too much on. And actually when my sister was trying this, we had the same issue with her in that it deposited too much. Like I said, it's a little bit difficult to wield because it's got so much color to it. So I'm gonna just take my trusty brush and my powder and then just buff that in. I'm just taking the same Charlotte Tilbury powder, just to kind of calm that down a little. I'm gonna take a little bit of that Charlotte Tilbury powder again and just soften that edge. So before I do lips, what I think I'll do is finish off the eye so we can see what that really looks like and then we'll go ahead and add the lipstick. Now on to lips. So I'm gonna take the same product and I'm going to just tap that on with my fingers this time. By the way, I use the NARS eyeliners in Mambo and Mulholland Drive. So Mambo on the top, Mulholland Drive on the bottom. I took a little bit more of that long comb and just brought it underneath. I used the Euphedra mascara I picked up in Italy. And I think that's it. So we're just going to take this and pat this on my lips. Actually. I can kind of swipe it on my lips. This reminds me a little bit of the Laura Mercier product I tried um, during my collab with Mandy. It was like a powder lip product. Reminds me of that. I prepped also with the Philosophy, the uh, little moisturizing lip balm. And this reminds me a little bit of this Hourglass product, the um, Unreal. An impact so I wanted to take if you haven't seen that video I swatched about and tried on about five of these very nice lip gloss and now that we're getting to the cooler months I think I'll probably use this one a little bit more and I'm going to just tap it on and that's it for this cranberry look using just this one product I wanted to talk about the first item though, this Giorgio Armani Prima. Now, I feel like this is probably going to be better, got lipstick on my hand. 
I feel like this is probably going to be better for oily skin types. Um, like I said, I did have to prep pretty uh, well in order to make this work for my skin. I still had just very faint dry patches. I exfoliated, I hydrated with the magic cream and a little bit of that clay to pot oil and still it picked up on those drier patches. Let me just take a look at it right now though and just let me see what that looks like. A little update on that. Yeah, it's just slightly bringing attention to those. So if you do suffer from any dryness, definitely again, try a sample if you can first before you commit to this. I think if you have, again, oilier skin, you're gonna have better luck. It is SPF 35. Again, this is in the shade four, very limited shade range, I would say. I still have other things that I like better than this. So this is just a nice, like, it's nice to have. I didn't need it in any way, shape or form, and it's not game changing for me but since I have it, I'll definitely use it, but it does take a little bit more work for me to, you know, work this into my skin, and it's not an easy product for me to use, so it does take a little bit more time and thought for me to use this effectively. And I don't like to spend a lot of time on products that I'm not liking, but I think if I throw them in with some other products just so you can get an update. So I know when I do my haul and favorites video, I talk about all the items I picked up and then if I like them enough, then they make it to a video, they're featured in a video, but I also feel like I need to touch base on some of the things that didn't work out well for me. And I don't want to just have a video of things I don't like. So that's why I usually don't mention them. But I thought if I include them in a look and you could see how they work and maybe since it didn't work for me, it doesn't mean it's not going to work for you depending on your skin type. I just wanna give you my information based on my experience, which is that since I have dry patches, this is not the first thing I'm going to pull for. Um, I was excited about it though because I read about it in an article, but there are so many tinted moisturizers and products like this that I think for someone with a dry skin or dry combo, actually I have dry combo skin, but my dryness is very dry. <laughs> so uh, it's not the one I, I would pull for. Moving on to the Lancome product. Again, very happy I had a chance to try it. You can see I've used it quite a bit since I've had it. Really easy to use, especially if I use my fingers just to pat it on my eyelids. Again, the blush is a little bit harder to use because it does deposit so quickly and so intensely. So just be very careful when you apply it get a brush that will work well with it. Actually, this one works pretty well, the Marc Jacobs one. Um, in terms of on the eyes though, I really like how it has many shades to it. I think it's very unique in that way that it has that kind of dimension to it. Plus you can kind of control the intensity based on how you apply it. Again, if you use your brushed fingers, you can use it wet. It doesn't, again, make as nice of a paste as say the Chantecaille does, but it will intensify it. Just don't use too much water because I had water kind of sitting on top of it when I tried to mix it together and then you could see when I applied it was kind of separating. Um, so there was too much water compared to the product, but it is um, something you can use wet if you want to. And then finally, the lip application, you can see really pretty. What's difficult about a product like this though is that when you reapply it, it's a little tricky. So say you're wearing this to dinner to take this out and you know, I would have to use a mirror. I'd probably have to go to the restroom and just use my finger to apply it. So that's just another thing to think about when you use something like this. It's not easy to reapply like a lipstick or lip gloss. So it does provide a really nice monochromatic look though. I'm really interested in the other shades now that I'm looking at this. So um, let's see, I wanna see how many other shades there are. They have Sparkle Pearl. So there's three shades in that. They have a matte three shades in that, and then they have a metallic pearl, which this one is, and there are four shades in that one. So all together, you've got um, seven, 10 different options. And it's a good price too, I think it's $25 for all three. You can get eyes, cheeks, and lips out of $25. So yeah, that was kind of fun. So if you enjoyed that video, let me know. Let me know if you've tried the Armani Prima because I would like to know if there's some way I could use this in a better way. I feel like I'm missing the hype on this one. Like I said, I don't really look up reviews until after I've used the product. So actually today as I was looking this up, I was looking to see if there were any how to applies that maybe I missed out on that might help me. Um, but in that quick search, I noticed the reviews were really good on this. So let me know if you've tried it. Let me know if you love it or let me know if that's one of the things that sometimes I don't get along with things that everybody else likes 
or something that everybody else doesn't like. I actually like, so sometimes I go against the grain when it comes to popular products. So let me know what you think, if you've had any experience with it, I'm curious. So I hope you enjoyed that video. So if you did, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you next time.